The Battle of Trebia or the Napoleonic Battle of the Trebia 17 to 20 June 1799 was fought near the Trebia River in northern Italy between the joint Russian and Habsburg-Austrian army under Alexander Suvorov and the Republican French army of Jacques MacDonald. Though the opposing armies were approximately equal in numbers, the Austro-Russians severely defeated the French, sustaining about 6,000 casualties while inflicting losses of 12,000 to 16,500 on their enemies. The War of the Second Coalition engagement occurred west of Piacenza, a city located 70 kilometers 43 miles southeast of Milan. In the spring of 1799 the Austrian and Russian armies ousted the French from much of northern Italy after the battles of Magnano and Cassano and they placed the key fortress of Mantua under siege. Assembling the French occupation forces of southern and central Italy into an army, MacDonald moved north to challenge his enemies. Rather than playing safe by moving along the West Coast Road, MacDonald boldly chose to move east of the Apennine Mountains, hoping to be supported by Jean-Victor Marie Moreau's French army. After brushing aside a much smaller Austrian force at Modena, MacDonald's army swept west along the south bank of the Po River. Suvorov swiftly concentrated his Russians and the allied Austrians of Michael von Milos to block the French move. On 17 July, the leading French divisions bumped into a holding force led by Peter Karl Ott von Batorquez along the Tidun River. Ott was rapidly reinforced by the bulk of the Austro-Russian army and the French pulled back to the Trebia. Suvorov attacked on the 18th but the outnumbered French managed to hold off the Allied drive. On 19 June MacDonald's entire army was concentrated and he ordered an attack which was poorly coordinated and repulsed at all points. Realizing that assistance from Moreau was not forthcoming, that night MacDonald ordered the beaten French army to slip away to the south and west. On the 20th the Allies overran a French demi-brigade acting as rear guard. Instead of bringing a powerful reinforcement to the hard-pressed French in northwest Italy, only the crippled remains of MacDonald's army arrived. Due to participation of some 3,000 soldiers of the Polish legions, the Battle of Trebia is commemorated on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, Warsaw, with the inscription, TREBBIA 1719 V 1799. <laughs> Background Coalition successes The War of the Second Coalition in Northern Italian began with the inconclusive Battle of Verona on 26 March 1799 between the Habsburg Austrian Army of Paul Cray and the Republican French Army of Italy under Barthélemy Louis Joseph Scherrer. The subsequent Battle of Magnano on 5 April was a clear-cut victory by Cray over the French, with the Austrians sustaining 6,000 casualties while inflicting losses of 8,000 men and 18 guns on their foes. The defeat was a crushing blow to French morale and prompted Scherrer to plead with the French Directory to be relieved of command. Finding his strong position behind the Mincio River outflanked on the north by 12,000 Austrians, Scherrer left 12,000 troops to hold the key fortress of Mantua, directed 1,600 more to defend Peschiera del Garda and retreated to the west on 12 April. Two days later, Alexander Suvorov arrived at Vicenza with a Imperial Russian army and assumed command of the combined Austro-Russian forces. On 27 April, the coalition allies led by Suvorov were victorious over Jean-Victor Marie Moreau's French army at the Battle of Cassano along the Adda River. The next day at Verderio, Jean-Mathieu Philibert Serrurier's division was surrounded and in the fighting that followed the French lost 252 men killed before the 2,700 survivors gave up. The defeats caused Moreau to fall back, leaving 2,400 men to hold the Milan Citadel. On 6 May the garrison of Peschiera capitulated to Cray while on of May Pizzagetone and 1,500 French soldiers surrendered to Conrad Valentin von Kame. On 12 May, Suvorov's subordinate Andrei Grigorovich Rosenberg suffered a minor setback in the Battle of Bassignana. Ferrara, Ravenna and Milan all capitulated to Austrian besieging forces on 24 May Meanwhile, 30,000 allies under Suvorov moved up the north bank of the Po River toward Turin. On the morning of 26 May, Joseph Philip Vukasevich's advance guard seized Turin with its arsenal and over 300 cannons plus large stocks of ammunition. 
Pascal Antoine Fiorella and his 3,400 man French garrison withdrew to the citadel where they were besieged. Early June found the Allied main body of 47,087 troops under Suvorov, Rosenberg, and Michael von Milos camped near Turin. Karl Joseph Haddock von Fudick with 9,900 Austrians watched the Swiss mountain passes. Cray's 19,760-man corps was engaged in the Siege of Mantua, covered by 6,122 Austrians under Johann von Klenau at Ferrera. Finally, Suvorov summoned the 19,458-strong corps of Count Heinrich von Belgard from Switzerland to Milan where they arrived on 5 June. To face this array, Moreau counted about 25,000 soldiers in the divisions of Paul Grenier, Claude Victor Perrin, Pierre Garnier de la Boissière at Genoa, Paul Louis Gaultier de Curveguin at Florence, and Joseph Elie Desiree Perruquet de Montrichard at Bologna. But the Allies were aware that Jacques MacDonald had a strong French occupation force in southern and central Italy. MacDonald's <laughs> <laughs> Offensive On 14 April 1799, the French Directory ordered MacDonald to help the French forces in northern Italy. Accordingly, he assembled the Army of Naples and moved north, leaving southern Italy in the hands of local forces. MacDonald reached Rome on 16 May and Florence ten days later. From there, the safest course was to use the West Coast Road to reach Genoa, keeping the Apennine Mountains between him and the Allies. However, MacDonald believed that the coast road was unusable for his artillery beyond La Ricci and feared that Austrian columns might interfere with the operation. But perhaps the real reason was that MacDonald wished to make a theatrical entrance to the campaign by smashing his way through the coalition allies. In order to accomplish this, he asked Moreau to march north and east to meet him near Piacenza, an impractical move that would place the army of Italy in the midst of its enemies. After his passage across the Apennines, MacDonald hoped to crush some of the Austrian covering forces. As it moved north, the army of Naples absorbed the divisions of Victor, Montrichard and Gaultier, bringing its total field force to 36,728 soldiers. On 9 June Suvorov received news from Peter Karl Ott von Batorquez that Victor and Montrichard reinforced MacDonald and that the French captured Pontremoli. Ott commanded 5,000 soldiers that belonged to Belgard's corps, but were acting independently near Parma. Immediately, Suvorov ordered Ott to conduct a staged withdrawal to Stradella, but to hold that position at all hazards. The Russian commander quickly made up his mind to move east to confront MacDonald. With the exception of Kame's division, the Austro-Russian army marched to Osti, reaching there on the 11th of June. The Allied troops reached the Bormida River near the French-held fortress of Alessandria on 13 June. That day, Suvorov got definite news of MacDonald's offensive. Meanwhile, a French squadron put in at Genoa on 2 June to drop off French reinforcements. Intelligence indicated that Moreau was about to descend from the mountains. Suvorov ordered Belgard's corps to march on Alessandria to keep an eye on Moreau while the rest of his army concentrated against MacDonald. The Army of Naples negotiated the Apennine Mountains in four major columns. The divisions of Montrichard and Jean Baptiste Dominique Rusca formed the easternmost column, moving from Florence to Bologna. Next to the west were the divisions of Jean Baptiste Olivier and Francois Watrin, accompanied by MacDonald and advancing from Pistoia on Modena. Farther west was Jean-Henri Dombrowski's division descending the Secchia River Valley. The westernmost column was made up of Victor's division marching from Borgo Val di Taro down the Taro River toward Parma. Because MacDonald's offensive across the Apennines was so unlikely, it took the Austrian covering forces by surprise. These were Klenau's command southwest of Ferrara, now reduced to 3,500 men, Prince Friedrich Franz Xaver of Hohenzollern Heckingen at Modena with 4,800 troops and Ott west of Fornovo di Taro. MacDonald planned to destroy Hohenzollern's division by pinning it with his own column while enveloping it with Dombrowski's division from the west and Ruska's division from the east. Klenau deduced the French strategy and shifted northeast behind the Panero River to block Ruska. MacDonald lost touch with Dombrowski's command. Nevertheless, MacDonald fell on the Austrians at Modena with two divisions. On 12 June in the Battle of Modena, the French inflicted losses of 750 killed and wounded on their enemies while capturing 1,650 men, eight guns and three colours. French casualties were 400 killed and wounded and 200 captured. 
During the pursuit, MacDonald was set upon by a troop of French royalist cavalry and suffered sabre cuts on the head and arm before his own soldiers could finish off their enemies. Since the fortress of Alessandria commanded the only crossing of the Bormida, the Austro Russian main body waited on a pontoon train which finally arrived on 15 June. At 5 p.m. the span was in place and Suvorov's army crossed and marched all night to reach Castelnuovo Scrivia on the morning of the 16th. After only three hours of rest, the soldiers continued the forced march during the day to their bivouac between Casteggio and Casatisma. In a period of 24 hours the Allied army covered 56 kilometers 35 miles. To provide security for his right flank, Suvorov detached Mikhail Mikhailovich Valetsky with one battalion of the young Baden Musketeer Regiment, 50 Cossacks and 80 Dragoons from the Karaze Regiment. Allowing for the possibility of defeat, the Russian army commander ordered the Po to be bridged at Mazana Korti for the main army in Valenza for Belgarde's corps. By this time, Belgarde and 14,500 troops arrived to maintain the siege of Alessandria and contain Moreau. To keep MacDonald from raising the siege of Mantua, Cray manned the north bank of the Po with several thousand troops. On 16 June at 10 am, MacDonald's vanguard arrived near Piacenza and began pressing Ott's command. Suvorov reiterated his orders for Ott to make a fighting retreat to the Stradella defile. By this time Austrian military engineer Albert Johann de Best got the Piacenza citadel into a defensible state after eight days of work, two or three companies of the Froelich regiment were assigned to garrison it. Victor's division led the French attack on Ott as Ruska's soldiers edged toward the south as if to flank the Austrians out of position. That night, Suvorov's chief of staff Johann Gabriel Chasteller de Courcelles rushed toward Ott's position with 100 dragoons of the Karaze regiment plus a half battery of horse artillery. Following behind was an improvised force including the Wowersman's Grenadier Battalion, three battalions of the Froelich regiment, the remainder of the Karaze regiment and one and one half batteries of horse artillery. If Ott could hold out along the Tidun River, it would allow ample space for the Austro-Russian army to deploy between the Po and the mountain spurs to the south. If Ott were forced back into the narrow Stradella position, it would be difficult for the Allies to form a line of battle and might even cause a rout. <laughs> <laughs> Forces Allied army The Austro-Russian army commanded by Field Marshal Suvorov was organized into three columns on 18 June. General Rosenberg led the mostly Russian first and second columns while General der Cavalry Milos directed the mostly Austrian third column. The Austrian forces numbered 9,851 foot and 4,586 horse while the Russians counted 16,219 infantry and 2,000 Cossacks. These numbers amounted to 32,656 and did not include artillerymen. The figures in brackets represent Austrian casualties. The first column on the right was headed by an advance guard under Major General Pyotr Bagration which included the Dendrigin, Kalaman, Lomonosov and Sanayev combined grenadier battalions, two battalions of the Bagration Jaeger Regiment, Grekov and Postiv Cossack Regiments and six squadrons of the Austrian Karaze Dragoon Regiment NR. 4 62. Lieutenant General Yakov Ivanovich Povoloshvikovsky led an infantry division consisting of two battalions of the Rosenberg Grenadier Regiment, one battalion each of the Dalheim and Shvikovsky Musketeer Regiments, and six squadrons of the Austrian Lobkowitz Dragoon Regiment NR. 10 107. Rosenberg personally accompanied the second column in the center. The division commander was Lieutenant General Forster and his infantry was made up of two battalions each of the Miloradovich and Tyrdov Musketeer Regiments and one battalion each of the Baranovsky, Forster and Young Baden Musketeer Regiments. The cavalry contingent was formed from the Molchanov Cossack Regiment and six squadrons of the Austrian Levener Dragoon Regiment NR. 14 76. The third column under General der Cavalry Milos was made up of a division under Feldmarschall Lieutenant Ott and a reserve under Feldmarschall Lieutenant Michael von Froelich with attached artillery 64. Ott's division included four battalions of the Natizdi NR. 39 565 and two battalions of the Mitrowski NR. 
40 198 infantry regiments, the Mahanovic Serbian Free Battalion 260, the 6th Battalion of the Banater Grenz Infantry Regiment 115, six companies of the Dispur Jaeger Battalion, the Semernikov Cossack Regiment and six squadrons of the Archduke Joseph Husser Regiment NR, 2 152. Frolik's reserve consisted of the Morzin 29, Par 109, Pertuzzi 106, Schiaffinati 37, Weber 62, and Wowersmans 102 Grenadier battalions. A second source stated that there were 17,000 Russians and 20,000 Austrians present and added three battalions of the Frolik NR, 28 Infantry Regiment, six squadrons of the Württemberg Dragoon Regiment NR, 8 2, and listed seven rather than six Austrian Grenadier battalions. This source also named as brigade commanders, Johann I. Joseph, Prince of Liechtenstein for the Grenadier, Ferdinand Johann von Morzen for the Nadezdi, Mitrowski and Württemberg regiments and Friedrich Heinrich von Gottesheim for the Dispur, Mihanovich, Banneter and Archduke Joseph units. <laughs> <laughs> French army In Macdonald's army of Naples chef de brigade Victor Leopold Berthier served as chief of staff, chef de bataillon Jacques Bardnet as chief of artillery and Jean-Louis de Breton as commissary officer. In the 8th of June order of battle that follows, the figures in parentheses are unit strengths. The advanced guard was led by general of brigade Jean-Baptiste Salmi and included the 11th line 1390, 12th line 1250 and 15th light 1340 infantry demi-brigades, a detachment of the 25th Chasseur à Cheval Regiment 85, the 6th company of the 8th Foot Artillery Regiment 34 and the 3rd company of the 1st Sapper Battalion 29. The 1st Division was commanded by General of Division Olivier and consisted of the 30th Line 1508 and 73rd Line 2009 Infantry Demi-Brigades, 7th Chasseur à Cheval 321 and 19th Chasseur à Cheval 314 Regiments and Gunners and Sappers 311. The second division was directed by General of Division Ruska and comprised the 17th Light 1880, 55th Line 886, and 97th Line 1760 Infantry Demi Brigades, 16th Dragoon 488, and 19th Dragoon 330 Regiments and Artillerists and Sappers 116. The 3rd Division was supervised by General of Division Montrichard and was made up of the 3rd or 2nd Line 730, 21st Line 1000, 68th Line 900 and 5th Light 1900 Infantry Demi Brigades, 1st Cavalry 263, 12th Dragoon 400, 11th Hussar 250, Cisalpine Dragoon 100 and Cisalpine Hussar 308 Regiments and Gunners and Sappers 112. The 4th Division was commanded by General of Division Watron and consisted of the 62nd Line 3420 and 78th Light 2120 Infantry Demi Brigade, 25th Chasseur à Cheval Regiment 260 and Artillerists 33. The 5th Division was directed by General of Division Dombrowski and comprised the 1st Polish Legion 2000, 8th Light Infantry Demi Brigade 893, and Polish Cavalry 500. .The remaining infantry division was led by General of Division Victor and included the 5th Line 1300, 39th Line 1225, 92nd Line 1240, 93rd Line 1265, and 99th Line 1320. Infantry Demi Brigades and 15th Chasseur à Cheval Regiment 400. There were also 526 men assigned to the artillery park. A second authority placed the 12th line in Olivier's division rather than Salmi's advanced guard, specified that the 17th in Ruska's division was light infantry, put the second line instead of the third line in Montrichard's division and listed different unit totals in some divisions. This second source gave the following division strengths for the end of May, Salmi 2,997, Olivier 5,826, Ruska 5,397, Montrichard 5,773, Watron 4,880, Dombrowski 3,555 and Victor 6,750. This yielded a strength of 30,980 infantry, 3,616 cavalry and 1,088 artillerymen and sappers for a 35,684 grand total. From this, losses from the Battle of Modena and other causes must be deducted. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Battle. Topic: <laughs> Tidun River the 17th of June. The Tidun River runs north into the Po west of Piacenza. With steep banks 2 to 3 meters high and a width of about 100 meters 109 yards, the stream has some defensive value. Like the Tidun, the bed of the Trebia is filled with white stones. On 17 June at 8 am the French opened their attack against Ott's positions behind the Tidun. On hand were a total of 18,700 soldiers including Salmi's advance guard. The French divisions were deployed with Victor on the right, Ruska in the center and Dombrowski on the left. Because of the wounds he sustained at Modena, MacDonald was bedridden in the village of Borgo San Antonio to the west of Piacenza. As senior officer Victor should have assumed tactical control of the fight, but he stayed in Piacenza, resulting in poor coordination of the French effort. Nevertheless, the determined initial assault ousted the Desper Jaegers from their west bank positions in the hamlets of Agazino, Pontetadone and Verato di Sopra. As Dombrowski's troops mounted a flank attack to the south, the troops of Victor's division fought their way to the village of Sarmato where they were held up by an Austrian artillery battery and two battalions of the Natasdi regiment. Chasteller was with Ott when the French attack started. He urged Ott to hold as long as possible and went back to find that his task force was hurrying on its way. At 1 p.m. Chastler's men arrived and were thrown into the fight. Nevertheless, at 3 p.m. the French overran both Sarmato and its defending battery, forcing Ott's troops back to a position in front of Castel San Giovanni. Soon afterward Milos arrived with three battalions of Austrians foot and some squadrons of the Archduke Joseph Hussars. Suvorov inspired the Russian columns by suddenly appearing at odd places along the line of march. If inspiration failed, Cossacks were employed to prod stragglers back into line. Chastler's units hustled off to the south to block a turning movement by Dombrowski's division. The Bagration Jaeger regiment veered off to the north while the four Russian combined grenadier battalions were committed to battle near Castel San Giovanni. Despite the odds turning against them, the French continued to mount spirited attacks. Gradually the Allies massed in two battle lines in front of Castel San Giovanni. By the end of the day, 30,656 Austrian and Russian troops were present to face the now outnumbered French. Finally, the Allies recaptured Sarmato and the abandoned Austrian cannons, compelling the French to retreat. The French fell back stubbornly, taking advantage of plentiful cover to repulse Austrian cavalry charges. Salmi's advanced guard covered the last stages of the withdrawal, forming square at C.A. del Bosco on the northern part of the battlefield. The shooting ended by 9 p.m. The French suffered losses of about 1,000 killed and wounded plus 1,200 more captured. Allied casualties are not given. <laughs> Trebia River 18 June Unexpectedly confronted by a large Austro-Russian army, MacDonald was in a dilemma. He believed that his 22,000 available soldiers were outnumbered and ought to retreat, but he anticipated that Moreau might soon arrive to pitch into the Allied rear. So he hoped to hold out until his last divisions could arrive on the field. MacDonald was also aware of the presence of a force under Jean-François Cornu de la Poipe that was in position to threaten the Allied south flank. On the 18th, Valetsky's detached force surprised La Poip's 1,500 French and 2,000 Genoese at Bobbio, sending them fleeing back to Genoa. On morning of 18 June the injured MacDonald inspected his army. He found his men ready to fight and the enemy inactive. Meanwhile, Suvorov and Chasteller planned to throw three columns at the French, with the main strength on the right to break down MacDonald's flank by advancing from the Tidun to the Trebia and finally all the way to the Neur, the next river to the east. With luck, the French would be driven back against the Po. The first column on the right was headed by Bagration's advance guard followed by Shvakovsky's division. The second column in the center was made up of Forster's division. The third column included the divisions of Ott and Froelich. Ott was ordered to drive straight ahead to the Trebia supported by his colleague. At some point Froelich's grenadier were supposed to reinforce the right flank in order to give more weight to its attack. Suvorov's desire to start the attack at 7 a.m. proved to be impractical due to the Allied soldiers' exhaustion, so it was put off until 11 a.m. 
Scouts reported that the French were defending behind the Trebia with advanced positions near the villages of San Nicolo, Grognano Trebiense, and Casaligio, from north to south. Bagration's advance guard forded the Tidun and attacked Dombrowski's Polish legion south of Casaligio at 2 p.m., achieving some surprise. Coming from the south, a Polish battalion threatened the Russian rear, but it was quickly hemmed in by Russian infantry. The Austrian Karaze dragoons and Cossacks and 230 men were forced to lay down their arms. An alert French staff officer, Pierre Edme Gotherin, brought the divisions of Ruska and Victor to the west bank of the Trebia where they stopped and drove back Bagration's troops. Rosenberg brought Shvakovsky's division into the fight while Suvorov personally rallied the shaken Russian infantry. The Russians presently gained the upper hand and compelled Ruska to pull back to the east bank of the Trebia, which his men accomplished while maintaining their ranks. The fighting in the center began when the Levener dragoons and Molchanov Cossacks clashed with some French horsemen and drove them back. Starting at 5 p.m., Forster slowly pressed back the right wing of Victor's division. Finally the French evacuated Grognano and fell back across the Trebia. Salmi's advanced guard, which was posted near San Amento north of the highway, was unchallenged most of the day. At about 2.30 p.m., the divisions of Montrichard and Olivier crossed the Trebia and marched to Salmi's support. Seeing these French reinforcements in his front, Milos decided not to release Froelich's division. The third column commander sent Ott forward at 6 p.m. and the Austrians easily brushed aside Salmi's outnumbered unit. Together, Ott and Froelich pushed Montrichard and Olivier back beyond the Trebia by evening. That night in a bizarre operation, Rosenberg took two Russian grenadier battalions across the Trebia south of Gosselengo. They somehow penetrated the French lines as far as Sedima where they routed a French detachment and liberated some prisoners. At 3 a.m., Rosenberg's expedition headed back to the West Bank, again without arousing any French sentries. Four squadrons of the Karaze Dragoons mounted a similar expedition but were detected and driven off by musketry. Both groups missed the pointless battle that occurred earlier in the evening. Hearing what they believed to be Moreau's artillery, three French battalions mounted an extemporaneous attack at 9.30 p.m., surprising an Austrian battalion. Milos called up reinforcements from his own and Forster's divisions while Prince Liechtenstein charged into the fray with the Lobkowitz dragoons. The artillery of both sides opened up on the melee, causing many friendly fire casualties. After strenuous efforts, the leaders of both sides managed to wind down the senseless fighting by 11 p.m. Trebia River 19 June Chasteller sent orders for the Allied army to begin the assault at 6 a.m. on 19 June. However, the plan was not delivered to Milos until 11 a.m. In the meantime, Milos noticed the presence of strong enemy forces at the north end of the battle line and sent 12 artillery pieces to the west bank of the Trebia to blast the French positions. Two French battalions crept forward to deal with the threat, but they were discovered and driven off by the murderously effective fire of two masked cannons. Also during the morning, the French set up a battery of 10 to 12 guns and began to hammer Forster's positions. This was apparently to cover a shift to the south by a body of French troops. The delay also affected the Russian forces and Suvorov began issuing orders at 11 a.m. Meanwhile, MacDonald determined to launch an assault, putting his faith in the French soldiers' enthusiasm for the attack and his troops' good morale. He still believed his army was outnumbered but he hoped to preempt an Allied assault. In the south Ruska and Victor were directed to attack side by side near Casaligio, supported by an outflanking move by Dombrowski via Rivalta. Montrichard was ordered to cross the Trebia near Grognano in the center while Olivier was instructed to crack the Allied line farther north near San Nicolo. On the extreme right flank, Watrin and Salmi were told to seize Kalandasco and turn the Allied left flank. Chasteller spotted Dombrowski's outflanking column and directed Bagration's troops against it. Dombrowski's division seized Rivalta and advanced up the Trebia's west bank as far as the hamlet of Caneto before they ran into the Russians. Accompanied in person by Suvorov, the Russians defeated their mostly Polish opponents with serious losses and forced them to retreat to the east bank. Ruska's initial advance was blunted by the fire of 14 artillery pieces belonging to Shvakovsky's division. Farther north, Victor's division was repulsed by a combination of Shvakovsky's left wing and Forster's division and withdrew to the French-held east bank. 
but with Bagration's forces pulled to the south by Dombrowski's ill-fated attack, Ruska's men found a gap in the Allied line south of Casaligio. The French infantry charged across the Trebia while a horse artillery battery mauled the Rosenberg Grenadier Regiment. Suvorov appeared on the scene to rally his Russians. Rosenberg swung the left wing of Shvakovsky's division to face the northern edge of Ruska's breakthrough while Bagration hurried north to hit the southern edge. At the same time, Chasteller borrowed four battalions from Forster and brought them to the scene. The combined attack forced Ruska's division to retire to the east bank. The Russians tried to follow up their success but Ruska's men repelled their attacks and the fighting in the south ended around 7 p.m. The assault in the center was delayed because of the tardy arrival of Montrichard's division. Its 5th Light Infantry crossed the river and deployed into line but was hit by a devastating volley from an Austrian grenadier battalion. Montrichard's other units advanced in columns which were out of touch with each other. When Froelich's grenadier and Forster's division counterattacked, Montrichard's division dissolved and its soldiers took to their heels. The Grenadier Battalion was swamped by fleeing Frenchmen, but it managed to keep its cohesion until some Russian infantry cut their way through to the rescue. Olivier's assault was preceded by a lightning cavalry charge around noon that swept the West Bank clear of Austrians. The infantry crossed in the cavalry's wake and soon captured San Nicolo and two guns. Hearing cannon fire, Liechtenstein went forward to check on the situation and found a crowd of Austrian troops running away from Olivier's assault. He immediately went back to his command and led two squadrons each of the Lobkowitz and Levener dragoons and one squadron of the Archduke Joseph Hussars against Olivier's south flank. Having disposed of Montrichard's division earlier, the Allies were free to mass against Olivier's division and eventually throw it back to the Trebia's east bank. The Wowersman's Grenadier Battalion recaptured two Austrian 12-pound cannons. Around the same time that Olivier made his attack, Salmi's advanced guard and Watrin's division, which had previously been in reserve, crossed the Trebia on the far right flank. Moving in two bodies, the French force brushed aside the Austrian outpost line. The right thrust reached C.A. Pernici on the Po's south bank while the left thrust carried almost to Kalandasco. Here Watrin paused because the noises from Olivier's fight were not encouraging. By this time, Milos had Olivier on the run and wished to attack across the Trebia. Hearing of the Watrin Salmi incursion, the Austrian general was forced to deal with it first. Milos sent Liechtenstein with a task force composed of one squadron of the Lobkowitz dragoons, two squadrons of the Archduke Joseph Hussars, 200 Cossacks, and nine companies of infantry. Meanwhile, an artillery battery detached from the Mantua Siege Corps under the command of Colonel Kinski unlimbered on the north bank of the Po. The Austrian guns proceeded to bombard their enemies, encouraging them in their decision to recross the Trebia though the Austrians made prisoners of 300 French. The firing ended in the northern sector about 9 p.m. The French maintained a firm grip on the west bank of the Trebia, but MacDonald's division commanders were not able to give him any estimate of their remaining strength. In a scene of horror, thousands of dead and wounded soldiers littered the bed of the Trebia while Piacenza's Austrian garrison blindly fired cannons into the night. Realizing that neither Moreau nor Le Poip were coming to his assistance, MacDonald issued the orders to retreat at 10 p.m. As soon as the engineers bridged the Nur River, the artillery and wagon train were sent across, followed by the infantry starting about midnight. <laughs> Nur River 20 June Suvorov determined to finish with the French so he ordered a new attack at 4 a.m. on 20 June. When the Allied forces reached the West Bank they found MacDonald's army gone. The French abandoned 7,183 wounded men in Piacenza which suggested that their losses may have been as high as 12,000 when the killed, transportable wounded and captured were counted. The Russians reported 681 killed and 2,073 wounded for a total of 2,754 while the Austrians admitted losing 254 killed, 1,903 wounded and 500 missing for a total of 2,657. Historian Christopher Duffy rounded these figures up to 6,000 Allied casualties. Digby Smith reported similar Allied losses, though he included three Russian generals wounded. From a total of 33,000 French, he estimated losses as 2,000 killed, 7,500 wounded most of whom became prisoners plus 7,000 men, 7 guns and 8 colors captured. 
Gunther E. Rothenberg gave Allied losses as 5,000 killed and wounded and 500 captured out of 20,000 Russians and 17,000 Austrians. He stated French losses as 9,500 killed and wounded and 7,000 captured out of 33,000. R. Ernest de Pai and Trevor N. de Pai rounded the losses to 10,000 French and 7,000 Allied, but asserted that 5,000 French became prisoners during the retreat that followed. French General of Division Alexis Aimé Pierre Cambrai was mortally wounded during the battle and died 2 July. The Austrians advanced into Piacenza where they found the wounded generals Olivier, Ruska, and Salmi along with the other non transportable French wounded. Milos secured the town with Froelich's division while launching Ott in pursuit. However, Ott was held up at the Neuer by a full French division. Farther south at San Giorgio Piacentino the Carrizé Dragoons charged the 17th Light Infantry but were rudely repulsed and the French gunners knocked out two of the Austrian cannons. Bagration's advance guard came up and Chasteller deployed it for a full-scale attack on San Giorgio. Intense musketry held off the Bagration and Miller Jaegers on the flanks but the combined grenadier won a foothold in the village. Suvorov was forced to commit part of the divisions of Forster and Shvikovsky before the French regiment was overwhelmed. A total of 1,099 French soldiers surrendered along with six guns and three colours. <laughs> Result The army of Naples withdrew southeast toward Parma where 200 wounded soldiers were abandoned. The Allies pursued the French on 21 June, reaching Firenzuola where they rested the next day. Suvorov determined from captured dispatches that MacDonald's mangled army was no longer a threat to northern Italy and marched the Allied army back west on 23, hoping to catch Moreau between himself and Bellegarde. Ott with 7,000 foot, 2,000 horse and 15 guns continued the pursuit. MacDonald ordered Montrichard's division to the east where it was used to form some garrisons which were subsequently captured. One battalion of Warazdener Grenz and one squadron of the Bussy mounted Jaegers tried to block MacDonald's retreat but were crushed on 24 June at Sassolo south of Modena. By 28 June the army of Naples was back at Pistoia where it stayed for several days before marching to the west coast in early July. The still ailing MacDonald was shipped off to France and replaced in command by Laurent Gauvion Saint Cyr. The garrisons in south and central Italy were picked off one by one by the Allies. Naples surrendered on 15 June, Fort Elmo in Naples Harbour on of July, Capua on 28 July, Gita on 1 August, Rome on 29 September and Ancona on 13 November 1799. Even the French held fortresses of northern Italy fell rapidly. Turin capitulated on 20 June, Bologna on 3 July, Fort Urbano on 10 July, Alessandria on of July and Mantua on 28 July. The next major engagement was the Battle of Novi on 15 August 1799. <laughs> Notes <laughs>